to know how they listen. To know how they listen. So, for instance, if we want to give them a whole heap of stuff, and they're, they're saying, I can hear what you're saying. If I said, I can hear what you're saying, what would I be? Auditory. Auditory. Oh, I see what you mean. I feel that would be fantastic for our, our wedding plan. Yes. Last but not least, there you go. But there is um, also a few extra ones in the months that which I won't confuse you with today. Our auditory, digital, digital, etc. But they're the main ones that we look at. So it's great to know when you're talking to people who you're talking to and listen to those key words. They hear what you're saying, they see it, so you know um, how you can help them. I'm not going into this too much today. It's one of my favourite things, which is behaviour style. So we have a little look at this when we do our workshops because once again, the more you know who you are, the easier it will be for you to relate to your clients. So I'm I, uh, talkative, sorry about that, which means I need to listen. When I'm, when I'm with my clients, I really need to listen. So I need to know the questions and, and the, so that I can give them correct answers so that I can move on and work with them. So it's very important for me not to talk too much. Okay, so we've got all these different behaviour styles and the I people in their customer service will always have fun. Okay, and it won't be too hard for them. You'll see people, it will be more difficult because they work uh, in the task driven area. So their task is to do this, this and this. And you're the customer and you could just be disturbing them right now. So it's important for us to know, if I am a C person, I have to realise I do have to drop my task when the clients come in. But a lot of the times, you think it would be that obvious, but it's not. So getting to know who you are is really great. And you know what? There's some fantastic little, um, what could I say, little tasks that you can get into on Google. If you Google DISC, and you can do your own little survey, find out who you are, and find your strengths, and maybe some of the areas that are gaps that you can make stronger. <laughs> so the more you know about yourself, the better it will be for your customers. And don't forget, all your customers fit in this area as well. So if you are always dealing with a direct person, they would come in saying they want this, this, this and this. And am I going to think that they're being rude to me? No. Sometimes we think the customer's being difficult, but are they? Are they? Or is it just mm -hmm. us? Okay, so the more we know, <laughs> the more we know, we'll start to realise, actually, it's not really my customer, it's me. Okay. What do you think this pup dog saying? body language, we just forget that we can. A lot of times you won't even know but you're doing that to the people that you meet. Straight away you're starting to feel things, see things. What's this guy saying? Join the team. He's pretty proud of something, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so well. <laughs> I'm going to buy it. What do you think about that one? <laughs> <laughs> Floating, like yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said something, didn't they? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through it? Okay, so be fabulous. Fabulous, we really look at fabulous as features, advantages, benefits. People buy on benefits how they feel about something. So it's make, making sure that you know by asking the right questions um, and then you'll be able to work out what's going to benefit them the most so that the feeling comes into it. Um, okay, so the trial closing is really important. Sorry, I'm going to go back to objections for a second. You should know your objections. Usually for any business there's only three objections. Do you know what objections you get? Can't afford it. Budget. Can't afford it. Budget. Not interested. Not interested. Not interested. 
So they've contacted you, but they're not really interested? They want to think about it. Well, they want to think about they've, it? They've just started to look. It's a long way away, usually. I so think. options, yeah, other options. Yeah, other options? Looking, yeah. I just got rejected because of my height. She was six foot one and he was six foot four. And she found out I was five foot one. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't stand on still. <laughs> Actually, I ended up saying it really well. <laughs> so, did they, find, did they find someone then who was six foot? I don't know. Oh, but also then his mother knew a celebrant. Okay. But to, to, to be able to move on, it was also that it was a high tip, yeah, that was their excuse. Well, a big suggestion in sales really is to know your objections. Write them down, have a look at them, because there's always a solution to everyone. So if it is price, maybe you need to have a look at three different packages that you offer. Okay, so let's have a look at where your objections really are, because that's where you can make a difference. Now we always get, there's a song of objection where you don't hear from that person again. But if you've got their name, you've got their email, you can call and find out. And don't be, if, you know, if they have gone with someone, ask them. This is a great time for you to say, look, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for calling. Can you let me know why you didn't choose me? Start to find out. Get some feedback. Because that's the only way you can make some changes. Feedback is so important. Testimonials are so important. We pop this little sheet on your table. I'll tell you about it later. There's a couple of little snippets from testimonials from our last course, but people love to know what people have thought about you, you know, and let them have their, their numbers and emails so that they can contact them and find out more. Okay, closing techniques. Does anyone use any closing techniques? Not very good at that. <laughs> it's really I good put to things on hold. <laughs> if I can't sell them anything, I'll say, well, do you want me to hold this for you? Um, because, this, you know, I can't get any more and it could go and then it gives me an option then to, I say, hold it till tomorrow if you could, and I give them my business card, could you please call me either way? If they don't call me, then I call them. So then I have an opportunity to then say, well, I can give it to you at a discounted price. Right, so you've given so, them an alternative. So rather than just walking out the door, I've still got a little bit of a hold. Beautiful. Okay, so really interesting. Um, getting people to say yes is great. So once you've listened, you found out information, you can start asking them questions. So this is what your wedding date set for this, yes. And your bridesmaids are all wearing red, yes. And once they start to say yes, so... I'd love to make a, a time to meet you. Is, is Saturday okay? Yes. Um, so that's what it's all about, getting them comfortable, getting them talking and getting them to say yes because people will say no before they say yes. Okay, and the only reason... A lot of people say yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yes. Okay. Um, and then the urgency close. You know, because it is with weddings, you know, things get booked out really quickly. Dresses get taken, photographers get booked up. Um, people don't understand if we're having 30 weddings a weekend at Noosa, you know, you, you've got urgency around that. Okay? So it's really important, once again, to start to get to know what's comfortable for you. When we're deal working with clients in sales, it's usually about making the appointment. So when they phone, it's usually about trying to get an appointment with them to see them or to make that next call or to send through that information. So you really know, we were talking earlier about scripting, one of the most important things in sales is knowing what you want from a conversation if someone rings up. What do you want from that inquiry? If you know that, that's great news. Okay. Because that means that you can go forward with your conversation, you know what your outcome is going to be, you know if you want to make an appointment or if you want them to put down a deposit today, etc. Really important. Has anyone here ever scripted anything for their phone calls, for their inquiries? One. If you do, it's not like you're going to read from a script, but what it's about is memorising it so that the words are your language, your talk language that comes out every time. But you're asking the questions so that you will find out the most possible information you can from them. So if you haven't scripted anything before, please try it. It's great. We do run workshops and we've done it for 
a lot of business owners. We work with a lot of business owners in their businesses because this is your first point of contact with this client. Okay, and I know when it comes to wedding, people are spending money. So, can I just um, ask you, if you were going out to provide customer service today, what would you need to do? I know it's a trick question. Be friendly. Friendly? Be well dressed. Well dressed. Professional. Helpful. Prepared. Knowledgeable. Information prepared. Okay, what else would you need to do? Enthusiasm. Be enthusiastic? Have all the right material to give them. Open to what they want. Open to what they want? Mm. Okay, so. Yes. What service do you Someone say listen. I said optimism. Oh, yeah. optimism. Okay, sure. You guys are just challenging my spelling, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some really easy ones that are really important to put up here. <laughs> To be open is to listen. To listen. Beautiful. Okay. One of the most important things we can do is to listen. Okay. What else? Ask questions. Beautiful. If we don't ask questions, we won't get the answers we need, will we? What else do we do? Be interested. Be interested? I think it's always, always nice is to have a nice farewell to them even if they don't purchase off you or they don't, you know, just always have a lovely, well, I wish you luck and, you know. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. We were talking before um, as well, like, you know, if a client does come to you and you can't help them then and there, but you know someone who could, recommend. Let them know where they can go. But keeping that information, if you say to the client, oh, I can't believe it, sometimes you've gone somewhere and it's been two doors down. Do you know who would do this? No. You've got to go searching. You won't go back to that store. If someone helps you and gives you this information, you can pick this up from here. And you know, If you've created synergy and have businesses around you, next time that person needs something, where do you think they'll go? We actually got two weddings from um, uh, Mr. Booking and like that once. And we met the couple and really got along well. And they recommended two of their friends to us and they both booked with us. Couldn't do that, Beautiful, fabulous, and that's customer service. So even though you couldn't provide that, they loved you, made that connection, and passed on that information. You never know who you know. I've been at some places where people think, oh, there's no point talking to that person, they can't help me. It's like, my goodness, you don't know who that person knows. <coughs> One of my biggest clients came from, um, came from an event where this lady was staying there and no one was talking to her. And I, just met her, spoke to her, she didn't have a business or anything, but put me on to um, a very big business that her husband ran. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know who the people are that you meet, and every time you're out, everyone you're talking to, it's really important you know, to spend that time and to care about the person that you're with at that time. Okay, so these are the things you're going to do. You're going to listen, you're going to smile, you're going to be helpful, professional. Of course, you're going to know your product knowledge, which is fantastic. <laughs> Um, if I said to you today, I'd like for you to go out now and sell, which is that horrible word, how on earth am I going to sell anything, what would you need to do? To persuade them. <laughs> Sorry? Persuade them. Beautiful. We have a winner, Red Frog. <laughs> Absolutely. You would smile, you'd listen, you'd question, you'd be enthusiastic, passionate about your business, you'd present well. You'd be friendly. So an actual fact. I always say to sell is to serve. So if a customer comes to you and they walk away with nothing, have you provided a service? So it's really, really important that when you are with the customer that you do do all these things and that you do listen and if you can't help them and you know someone else who can, well great. And what you are doing
by networking and getting to know each other is providing the best service to the customers because you know who can do the videos, who can take the photos, who can do flowers, who can provide a dress. It's really important to know all these things and if you can't, you can help that client. Believe me, when the next thing's happening, who are they going to go to? It will be you because of your fantastic service. Got a little printout here for you today to take away. Phone skills will determine how successful you will be in your business. Does anyone believe that? Uh, is the phone really important to you? Yes. In the wedding? Yes. Yeah, really important. And how do you feel you go with that technique, with the phone? Is it working? Yes, I think mine, I do. Works, works well? Works really on the phone. Great. So it's really important to, to really know how many you are converting from your phone. What is happening to your clients once they ring up? Know your marketing strategies. Where are these calls coming from? If you add that into your script, it can be something that you ask them at the end of your calls each time, once you've built that relationship. Now, I'd love to know where you heard of us from. Could be a magazine, it could have been an expo, it could be word of mouth. Also wonderful, if it is a referral, it's so great to be able to ring that person and say, oh, so-and-so has just called me, thank you so much for your referral. You know, because they would love to keep doing that or send them a little thank you card with a scratchy, which is something that we do as well. You know, it's just a little surprise and delight and they will continue to want to refer you. <laughs> they may get lucky with the lotto. So having a little look at this, it's really important, of course, the smile, which you may do with your um, mirrors from now on in. <laughs> uh, have a positive attitude, guys, when you answer that phone. If something's just happened, it's going to come across. So really important to be positive and enthusiastic. This is the call I want. I'm going to get some new business today. Fantastic. Love rejection. Third one on the list. Why would you want that? Why would you want to love rejection? Otherwise... If you can't handle rejection, you're just going to go down on yourself. Beautiful. You're going to crumple, aren't you? Reject. <laughs> you know, and then you're not going to know what to do the next time, and whether it's you or whether it's the business or maybe my product's not right. You know, so it's really, really important for us to be confident. And rejection happens. We don't always have the right product for the right person. We might be able to help them. But rejection also teaches us what we need to do. So we learn from it every time something happens. It's what we learn from. It's like handling objections. An objection is like a rejection, but what are you going to do about it? And just remember, if you know your three main objections that you'll get for your business, and really and truly there will only be three when you look down at it and really work it out, all you have to do is overcome them. Okay, and then you've got the sale, so that's fantastic. Know when to make phone calls. When is the best time for you to make phone calls to do with weddings? <coughs> Plus five. People have finished work and have time to talk. So it's really important to know when is the best time for you to make those calls. Okay? Does anyone ever stand up to make their phone call? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it all the calls? No. You can't know. But about no. a percentage I'll walk while I talk. So when the boss Sit rings, still. <laughs> 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 just kidding, don't stand to attention when Dee calls though. But it's amazing, when we do have big clients, sometimes you know we will stand up for them, but you know what? You could stand up for all your calls. Just starts to put you into that frame of mind, and it's a good exercise as well. I've started to do some leg, no, I won't tell you what I'm doing, because then you'll think, Kat's on the phone doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where you posture well, really important um, that we do stand well and we do present ourselves well. Uh, as you'll notice today, I'm just in black. I don't have a lot of jewellery or anything on. They say it's the best way not to be judged. So if you're going into something, you know, not to have heavy jewellery, all the rest of it, unless that's a personality and that's what you're wanting them to, that's why they've gone with you, that's what you're portraying. So important to know who your clients are when you're dressing for them. Assume people want to speak to you. They've phoned you, so that's the good news. Um, and even if we are cold calling, we're cold calling people we know that we can help and that we've got something to offer them. So this is where it's really important for you to be very comfortable and know that these people need to speak with you. 
and build up that confidence. Use that other person's name how many times? In a phone call? As often as you can. Fantastic, absolutely. Um, I have to do it at least three times to remember. But more importantly, when we were in Bali, what we found was I'm really bad at remembering people's names and faces in Australia, but overseas, I remember them, and why would that be? Wow. Because <coughs> you have to make more of an effort to remember them. Maybe. <laughs> but it's interesting. They say, hi, I'm Polly, how are you? I'll be able to help you today. Remember me, I'm Polly, blah, blah, blah. and I'll talk to you, and they'll say, see you later. Next time you come back, just ask for Polly. So they're very good at getting to remember. So at an expo, you know, important, you know, say your name. And if you pop in the shop, ask for me, say your name again. Give them your name. Start to build a relationship. If they use your name, you've started to build a relationship with them. Okay? So really important for them to know your name. Know what you want from the call, which is what we spoke about before with our scriptings. Uh, use words to draw out emotions. So how do you feel about that? Remember, if we feel about something, we're using our, our heart. If you ask them what you think about something, it can bring up more negative. Because thinking allows us to be able to have the no's and the other things that come through. Feeling is more positive. Thinking's more negative. So how do you feel about that is a very, very powerful. If you go away with anything today, how do you feel about something and what I suggest? Okay, because that gives you some power and some knowledge. You're a person that is now saying what I suggest. So from today, what I suggest is if you are able to leave your business cards here, I will send through some sales tips if you like, or I like to call them service tips, because I think sales is all about service. Know your products, help your customer, and sales follow. Okay. So what I suggest is really powerful, and how do you feel about that, or whatever you're talking about? That starts to get them thinking good things, okay? Practice your phone scripts. Uh, really, really important to know what you want from that conversation. I know we've said that three times today, so you will remember those ones. And how many phone calls you need to make? How many phone calls do you need to make in a day or a week? to fill up your calendar. Does anybody know? Okay, that's good. <laughs> it means you've got lots of room for improvement there as well. Starting to understand how many calls do I convert? How many calls do I need to make? How many prospects do I need to make? Also guys, if anyone is anyone here using Facebook for their business? Okay, fabulous. If you're not and you don't have time and you've got a teenager, get them to do it for you. Otherwise, we've got little programs, school-based training programs that the government pays, etc. But it's great. You're in the wedding business. This is fantastic. This is the best day of their life. People are happy. All formals or whatever you're using it for. So get these things out on Facebook, some photos, some, this is what we did this weekend, this is where the weddings were, you know? It's great. It gets out to so many people. It's really, really important in your industry. Uh, understand the highs and lows in your emotions and what the days that you're feeling great, what makes you feel great, and when you're comfortable to make these phone calls, especially when you're cold calling. Uh, and who here likes to sell the product on the phone or who here sells the appointment, the next part that's going to happen from that call? Both. Both. Both? Mm -hmm. so you did both? Great. So really important to know that at the end, where do we go from here? What I suggest is, okay, so that the client knows now what's happening. Something's going to be emailed through, you're going to meet at a coffee shop, uh, whatever's going to happen, they know that next step. <laughs>